Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we're about to go into an extreme weather pattern all the way for the rest of August and going into September as well. This also is going to affect our tropics. Now, you can see right now for our tropics, we don't have a lot going on on the Atlantic side. We have all this dust that's still there all this unfavorable environment moving through, but this is getting less and less as we go towards the end of August, and then we still got waves that's gonna be coming in this direction. Matter of fact, you can look over here for the Pacific side. Actually, the Pacific side has more activity, looking more like an El Nino than a La Nina. Look, just a lot more activity going on on the Pacific side than we have on the Atlantic side. But this is gonna be like a switch turned on literally in a couple weeks. I'll show you the information. Plus, we have a big weather pattern change that's going on for the lower 48. Now, you can see that we're in that ridge going into that trough, and this is still bringing cooler air on the way down, but it is bringing that severe weather with it, mostly for the northeast, bringing you chances for tornadoes. And that's what you got to watch out for in the northeast. It's a small chance, but there is a chance for tornadoes for today as you go through the evening, as these storms rocket right from the mid-Atlantic up towards the northeast, you're going to see chances to get a brief spin up on these tornadoes. This isn't a big chance. It's only a 2% and it could shrink down a little bit. That's what I'm seeing on Colorado State University. But after that, then we're going to go into an extreme pattern. Now, I talked about this before. No one wanted to hear about it, at least not from me. But I told you a long time ago how they're going to this high ridge on the Canada, bringing all this heat. Then the heat's going to transfer over towards the eastern side of the lower 48 get very hot matter of fact and all these cool temperatures are slowly going to start leaving away now you can see this when you look for your next six to ten day temperature forecast and you can see that you have all this above average heat moving and you still got this big high dome big high ridge going all the way into canada and coming all the way across now with that trough coming in it's going to keep cooler temperatures along the mid-atlantic and you're going to be into the beginning of that ridge over here on the west coast so you're going to have a lot of storms start coming in from canada and going in this direction one thing you got to remember with a big dome of heat like this, we're talking about a high pressure going clockwise. So all these storms are going to get pulled around into this direction and also into this direction. Whoever is under that high pressure, it is commonly known. If you have a high pressure sitting over you, you have clear weather. You have a lot of heat and you wish you had some weather, probably get rid of some of that heat. But there's clear weather when there's a high pressure. Now, you also can see as we go from the 8 to 14 days, it's going to change. You're going to lose all that below average temperatures and this heat is going to persist. We're not going into no Arctic blast for September. We got our early fall, but it's going to be a rather warm beginning. Now, we had a very strong day yesterday on storms, not showing tornadoes, but still wind damage could be just as bad as tornadoes. Showing we had almost 200 wind damage reports. We had some for the West Coast, but over here for Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, moving through the Southeast in our coastal northeast, this whole region right here is where a lot of these wind damage reports came from, and it was some serious storms. And people literally had to run and duck for cover for these storms. And you can see the weather pattern we're going into. We still got this big high dome of heat going on. While these storms with this front comes down across the southeast, but the northeast is where all these storms are going to be transitioning towards. Towards the northeast, also you're going to get some storms over here along the southeast. Now this isn't going to be tornadic in nature for the southeast, but it is going to be for the northeast. It's going to be pulling all these dew points up, and that's going to help get these storms really strong for today. Not showing there'd be a lot of chances for tornadoes, but there is a few chances as this storm comes down all night long for the southeast. But you can see right here for the high pressure, these storms are just revolving around the high pressure. And this is going to bring more storms. Matter of fact, the storms are going to start coming in from Canada across the northwest. So you can see as you get that deep ridge in for today that you get a lot of storms that bruise up towards the northeast mostly towards new jersey you get some towards maryland delaware even some towards virginia as you go through the evening mostly showing it's going to be somewhere around 6 to 9 p.m then it's going to start moving along the coast of the carolinas for tonight and go further offshore then you may be to 
Florida panhandle early in the morning. But then you got the cooler weather coming in, and there's not going to be no severe weather because you're going to be in that mode for a bit. But then the storms are going to start kicking up around that high pressure for the upper Midwest, then the Northwest. So you can see for today, you have this big slight risk area and the marginal. It is not all for tornadoes. It's only going to be for the Northeast, but still a lot of people in this warning, 38 million in this warning. So here's your cities and states at risk for the chance for a tornado for today. And remember, this is going to be later on this evening. You do have chances for hail for today, but not as strong as your winds are going to be. These are the same winds that pushed down for yesterday. Even significant severe expected right here in this black for Kansas. That's at least 74 miles per hour wind gust. That's chances for hurricane force without the hurricane. But you can see where these storms are going to brew up for today and then push off for tomorrow. But here's your cities and states at risk for the chance for the damaging winds for today. The National Weather Service has scattered severe gusts are possible from northern Kansas to the western part of the Ozark Plateau and in a separate area from the mid-Atlantic states to the deep south this afternoon to early evening. The damage in gusts will be somewhere around 50 to 65 miles per hour, likely in the primary risk for Kansas, but some risk for hail and perhaps a brief tornado can also be expected. Now, shortly after that, as we go through the week, you can see this high pressure expanding. And that's exactly what it's doing. It is expanding into Canada and it's coming all the way down. So you're going to be cooler over here where your trough is going to be, especially during nighttime hours. This is not going to last long. And you're going to be warmer over here in this big high pressure expanding. And you can watch how the storms funnel in from the northwest all the way down from Canada. Multiple storms just going to keep tracking on in from the west at the same time you can watch as you go into your 20s of august this big high pressure is going to move still over the eastern side of lower 48 i reported this a long time ago once again nobody wanted to hear about the hot temperatures and i totally understand and i, I wasn't going to report it but i can't just say oh i'm not going to report it because y'all didn't want to hear about it and you click off and my job isn't just to make views. My job is to report what's coming, whether you watch it or not. So the, the hot temperatures are still going to be moving over, especially the heat in the sea. So you got to watch out for that. The good news that can come out of this is this is right when we're going to start getting some waves, maybe some front induced sneaky waves and maybe some waves that comes across. This is before our big chance coming late August, the very beginning of September, still showing that maybe even very strong or very nothing more to the west. I'll show you. But at the same time, when you got this big dome of high pressure right here, this is going clockwise. So anything that comes along would get pushed further to the west. Now, if this does not last and it stays in that trough, well, then the trough will push things further towards that way. And you can see right here, when you look from all of North America, that these storms are coming straight down Canada all the way to the northwest of the U.S. and going up the upper Midwest. That's because you got that big high pressure steering everything into that direction. Also showing eventually at this storm after this first one, the second one's going to be stronger. It's going to start bringing 40 and 50, maybe even up to 60 miles per hour wind gusts with it as it goes on that high ridge. Now, unfortunately, I got to talk about these temperatures again. I know you don't want to talk about them. Everybody wants the cold weather ever since it's been put out there so many times because he got so many views off of it he kept repeating itself just to make money off of all y'all about this arctic blast there is no arctic blast i said this so many times we got an early fall but no arctic blast matter of fact it's getting worse with the temperatures it's getting even warmer so you can see here with the euro when you look at your ao your arctic oscillation after we go by all this big heat dome going on that's slowly going to start tracking in as we go by the 4th of september and on showing it's not coming in too far matter of fact it's already retracting back with some of that cold air the heat is still going to be there and it's not really sticking in now when you look with the gfs it's taking it even later in september and already going away by the time we go later on into september by the time we go from the middle and on showing this cold air is only coming in just for a little bit and then it's going to go away and we're going to start warming up again and be on a very mild uh, early fall. So we have new warnings showing that this heat dome is going to persist all the way until the end of August. So all the way into the 24th through the 26th, you get a slight risk for excessive heat in this region. And it is going to carry all the way from the 24th and 25th 
into the south and all the way across the deep south all the way until the 30th. Now you're going to have cooler nights over here on the eastern side of the lower 48, but sooner or later this heat is going to move over. This will expand. Look here, all this orange, this is all representative of rapid onset drought risk. Now over here where you have this dotted white area, this is where your ongoing drought may persist or worsen. So just be aware, I know y'all need precipitation and some rainfall, but this is going to be less and less and get worse in these dotted areas. When you're under a big high pressure of heat, there is no weather. Quick example, and I mean quick, as we go through Tuesday, you can see how we get these 90s shooting all the way up into Canada. This is not your heat indices, it's only your temperatures. You're still sitting over 105 degrees in the south, in the 90s across the southeast. Your high is going to be in the 60s all the way from Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes towards the northeast and New England being into the high 50s. But once again, overnight, you're going to be having that big high ridge of heat. So it's going to be warmer in this region, but you're going to be cooler still in the 50s on the northwest and across Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes and the northeast, maybe into the 40s. Which is exactly why you see that ridge I showed you in the beginning of the video with the below average temperatures on both sides of the lower 48. And once again, your precipitation for the next 6 to 10 days because of them storms coming in from the northwest, you're going to be above average on your rainfall. You're going to be below average in all of this brown section as that cool front comes on through. It's not going to be any precipitation and barely above average across the deep south and the southeast. All this white, that's representative of your average rainfall rainfall for this time of year. Now as you go towards Saturday, this is literally six days away and the region is going to move towards the east. I told you all about this a couple weeks ago. Now it's bringing 90s into the eastern side, even high 80s into Canada and you're getting over 105 degrees moving up towards the north central and the upper midwest. This is not your heat indices once again. This is your temperatures and remember these temperatures are taken in the shade. Your overnight lows is going to be cooler in the northwest because you have them storms moving in as well but everyone else is going to be in the 70s by this time and you can even see as we go into the week after next as we go into the 2nd of September we still have this big high ridge of heat kicking in and over 100 degrees in multiple areas look at all the 90s kicking in this isn't even your heat indices this is your heat indices for that range bring in over 100 almost over 105 almost everywhere in the southeast across the ohio tennessee kentucky valley the north central very hot temperatures moving in please get ready for this i know you're hearing about this september arctic blast it's not coming as quick as you think and that is exactly why you see from your 8 to 14 days all the way to the end of august there is no big freeze coming anytime soon and your precipitation everyone is either going to be in the average below average or barely above average in the green and still showing because of this big high ridge of heat that's moving in these storms are either going to track towards the west or they're going to get pulled around towards the east because of this phase we're going into so as we go towards the end of august the beginning of september still showing we could get a front induced low that we need to be aware of in the gulf because of the front but still showing the systems are going to start flaring off in the caribbean and start traveling to the west either going into the atlantic really strong because of that trough or getting pulled further to the west because of that high pressure i will keep you updated it will either be very weak or very strong one or the other either way the dust is still leaving still showing our favorable environment is still going to be there from the beginning of september on but everything is starting to move a little bit further to the west. So either it's going to be late formations right around the Western Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico possibly, or get pushed right into the Pacific. And this is September. This is when we're supposed to be getting all these majors happening. This is our peak. But you can see clearly from a GO satellite that as we go through August, our dust coming off Africa is less and less and way out this is where everything literally will be turned on by a switch going to la nina is supposed to be less wind shear i'm still not seeing that la nina phase but less dust is definitely showing the beginning of things about to ramp up thank you for your time today hope you have a very wonderful sunday out there everybody 
I know I said I wasn't going to update you about this heat, and I couldn't just not update you when I see things getting worse and lasting longer. Once again, I'm not in it for the views, and those views has bombed on that video. But here I am again showing you, so I don't care if the views bomb. Those that are listening, I hope you be aware of this heat that's moving through. Ignoring the video will not make the temperatures go away. I wish it worked that way, but it does not. Before you go today, Genesis 8, 20 through 22. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet Savior, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every thing living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Amen. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Thank you to everyone that helped share the video, like the video, give this information to other people. No one wants to hear about the heat, but people need to know the truth. And that's all I like to report on is just truth and facts. So remember, all glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life <laughs> and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody.